So KSI this year was supposed to fight Dylan Dennis. Now, in my opinion, KSI would have beaten Dylan Dennis 10 times out of 10. There was no chance that Dylan Dennis would ever have beaten KSI. And even though the fight was confirmed and it seemed as if it was going to go ahead, there was always that thought in the back of my mind that Dylan Dennis is going to pull out. You know, like he seems to always do. Dylan Dennis's last fight was in 2019 and every single year since then he's been saying to multiple people yeah 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 I'll fight you I'll fight you and then when either it comes down to signing the papers or showing up he never attends and there's always a reason as to why he can't do it and of course when it comes to KSI versus Dylan Dennis it is exactly the same situation he's pulled out yet again. So if you look online, the official reason as to why Dylan Dennis pulled out of this fight, the same word always comes up, and that is unprepared. Apparently, Dylan Dennis couldn't find someone to teach him how to box in time. He couldn't gather enough you know, people together. He couldn't make a team, and it just wasn't possible. There was also concerns as well that Dylan Dennis wouldn't even be able to make the same weight as JJ as well. Just overall, it looks like he accepted the fight like he normally does, and he wasn't prepared for it and when it comes down to the fight it's like look are you going to be ready yes or no he's probably just gone no uh, uh, no 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 yeah no yeah and to be honest am i surprised no not at all i almost expected this to happen because let's be real dylan danis's reputation is so bad at the moment because of all the years that he's been pulling out of fights let's be real dylan danis he's not a boxer you know, he specializes in jiu-jitsu. There was no way in hell that he ever would have been able to learn boxing in the time that he accepted the fight to the start date. It was guaranteed that he was going to lose no matter what. And I wouldn't be surprised if he probably wasn't even looking for a coach or he wasn't even trying to sort out any of his problems. Because at the end of the day, Dylan Dennis already got what he wanted. He got his 15 minutes of fame again. He got people talking about his name yet again. But the difference is, is because he wasn't able to sort out the coaches, he didn't have to go through the embarrassment to losing to KSI. But then obviously, you know, you can question what's actually worse, losing a fight to KSI, actually trying, even though people are expecting you to lose, or bailing from yet another fight. And I'm guessing somewhere down the line, Dylan Dennis thought, oh, well, maybe if I just not take this fight maybe that's better than losing but in my eyes i think if he took the fight and then lost that's more respectable than just not turning up either way his reputation is ruined yet again they had to find a fighter for ksi pretty much immediately because dylan dennis pulled out 10 days before the fight so they were looking around and they thought okay we need someone who's actually going to be a worthy opponent someone who's boxed before so they chose phase temper now if you don't know who phase temper is he is a youtube boxer who has a record of two wins and one loss he lost his fight to a guy called king kenny now he actually appealed this decision with the boxing commission and they actually changed the result it turns out the boxing commission actually looked at what phase temper was saying and said you know what no he's right he did take the win the face temper took the win from king kenny so another fight that he then has is against slim and if you watch that fight back you can just see that slim was just so much better than face temper in pretty much every single way face temper although being six foot four and slim being six foot you know there was no real competition slim was the better boxer and i think face temper really did struggle to deal with slim's awkwardness because Slim is a very awkward fighter. So after that loss, Face Temper then goes on to fight another guy by the name of Overflow, and it was probably one of the worst YouTube boxing performances from someone else that I've ever seen. I'm not joking, this fight was probably about 15 seconds. Face Temper lands one punch on this Overflow guy, and he goes down. It was just so obvious that he was acting, and there was no way in hell that he was knocked out. It's like he turned up, Got, you know pretended to get like rocked from one punch and then he stood up and then left with his bag like it was one of the worst fights i've ever seen <laughs> 
at least face Tempu was then able to restore his reputation by having another win after losing to Slim. And then of course we've now recently just seen face Temper go up against KSI and he lost. Yes, FaZe Temper lost on the first round to KSI and it was by a knockout, quite a brutal one. So what are my thoughts on KSI versus FaZe Temper? Okay, so let's just say within the first 10 seconds, the commentators were saying that KSI was already swinging wild. And you know, this is one of the things where I just can't quite understand KSI has been saying for ages that he's been sharpening up his boxing ability, saying that he's not going to be swinging like this. But then after all of these fights he's had since Logan Paul, he's still swinging wild. I don't quite understand because he knows that that's his biggest drawback in his fighting style, yet he still does it. But anyway, you know, Tommy faced temper. He looked a lot better than what he did against Slim. Like, he did look more confident. Ish. He did actually land a few punches on KSI. He did far better than people like that Panida guy that JJ fought last year. He did better than a professional boxer. But there was just such a visible image. Like it was very clear that there was such a difference in confidence levels. It was crazy. You know, KSI, you could tell that with his ego and everything, you know. He went in there a ball of energy, like he was so confident, he had no fear at all. Uh, whilst Face Temper was a bit more reserved and he kind of held back a bit and he didn't really do all that much. He tried to box the best that he could, but you know, when you had KSI who was running towards him, throwing his hands as hard as he could, Obviously, Face Temper felt the pressure and he just couldn't deal with it and he just couldn't think and he was just getting, you know, beaten up basically. Like, it was very clear, you could see the difference. Face Temper was slow, didn't have much aggression, and KSI was just going absolutely ape shit like he normally does. And, you know, although KSI was swinging erratically, you know, it, it was pretty visible that KSI was the better boxer. But the thing that I'm still a bit like, mmm, like. <laughs> I do respect the fact that JJ's in the ring and he's trying to prove a point to people. But the thing is, is he's still making all the same mistakes that people are criticizing him for. Like, he still looks not great at boxing. He's still doing questionable things like running forward with his hands down, almost like charging, running into someone and then like doing this weird stuff like his boxing is just weird i don't get half of it it's very difficult for me because i wish i could show you clips but recently i've had a lot of problems with copyright issues and i'm tired of being demonetized and then having to have to make about 500 changes to a video like you know i want to show you clips to see what so you can see what i'm on about but just go back and watch the clips on youtube you'll see if you just watch ksi movements you will sit there and question and think what are you doing like this is I've never seen anyone box like this. But hey, it doesn't matter. I mean, it got him the win. Even if it does look bad, he's still won. And you know, let's be real, KSI is the last three people that he's fought. They've all been pretty terrible and they haven't been able to deal with JJ's energy. They haven't been able to deal with JJ's power. Like It's pretty evident at this point that JJ does have power as he's knocked out multiple people. And all these people just never had the confidence to stand up to JJ. But again, after watching, you know, this phase temper fight, although phase temper isn't great, there are still a lot of things that JJ is doing wrong, particularly with his guard and, you know, where he's throwing punches, he's swinging so wide and leaving his body, his face, he's leaving everything open. And the reality is, is if he fights someone who actually is confident, someone who has ability, the second that he goes against someone that has that, they will just capitalize on all of these weaknesses and they're not gonna be intimidated by someone that's just swinging wild. And that's JJ's biggest problem. And I think everybody can agree with that. JJ is a bit too wild. He's only winning because he's fighting people that are not good enough to deal with that kind of pressure. But when he goes up against someone that can deal with that pressure and actually knows how to stop JJ from swinging like that, there's not gonna be any competition. But it's like I said before, KSI taking all these journeyman fights, don't. it's very hard really to judge JJ on his boxing ability because you know he's not actually able to show his skill. Like he's found a technique to beat these people and although it's scruffy, although it looks not great, 
it is working. Maybe he'll completely change when he fights someone who is a bit more composed and someone who actually does know, like, you know, what they're doing. He might change completely, and that might be the thing that people are waiting to see this new JJ. But let's be honest, we are all waiting now for the Jake Paul fight, which looks like it's actually happening this year. I just want to say congratulations to FaZe Temper for actually standing up and doing the fight, unlike Dylan Dennis. FaZe Temper probably went into the ring pretty terrified, but you know, he stood his ground, he tried his hardest, and it doesn't really matter because you were the underdog and you tried and Dylan Dennis didn't. So, con so congratulations to FaZe Temper. But anyway, I just want to end this video by saying that I have actually got another video that's going to be coming out very soon talking about Jake Paul and KSI where they have a, a conversation or argument really over a call. So yeah, that's going to be interesting to talk about. So yeah, I just want to say thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's many more to come. I hope you guys take it easy. Peace.